Hi, everybody. So this is a live Zoom meeting on March 16th, 2022. Um, Going to be talking amongst any other members of Theta Traders if you guys join in. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the open positions about to expire on that third week of every, third Friday of every month. Um, looking at, at the positions for 414 as well, and how they're doing, and then features positions. So just going to discuss all that first. And then as members come in, if there's any other general questions, I did get a few from the Discord group. So let's just look at the open position so far. So if you noticed um, on the trades for 2022, it started um, just monitoring all these trades from 218 on. And you could see from 218, these are the cash secured put sides. Uh, the ones that are 318 that are for this Friday, all were able to buy the close at the target 50% profit, which is good. Uh, green here means that we're still, uh, our strikes are still out of the money. And there's a few that are getting close to being challenged, but in general, they're looking pretty good right now. Um, for the 414s, Uber's hovering close to that 30 strike. Uh, QS relatively close still, but you got a good 250 buffer. AMC has dropped a little bit from the opening position, but still a $3 buffer there. FSL still hovering around that six marks, so it's still pretty good. Board's still okay. MP is gained quite a bit from when we started, doing good. Roblox slightly up from when we entered position. And so far having a few good days. So Cascade put side looking very good. There's no, nothing in the red yet. Nothing you would have to wheel. Looking at the spread side. Out of all these positions, there were two that were uh, one was a break even, and then the UAL was actually a loss here. It did bounce back up to the 40, but it dropped to the low 30s a week ago, and it hit the 3x stop. That's okay, though. If you look at all these other ones expiring Friday, I'm just going to let these go and expire them to get the full credit for the spread side. And it's up to you if you want to buy to close them at a certain target percent. For the CSP side, I typically do 50% profit because they're usually riskier positions. Um, for the spread side, I tend to maybe close them out at 80, 90%. Um, but for these purposes, um, just for monitoring, I'm just gonna let them go. I got someone waiting. Hey, Daryl, how are you doing? First one here. Already. I could I could barely hear you. Can you speak up a little bit? I'm the first. Wow. Oh. Yeah, you're the first. <laughs> Who knows? You might be the only. Um, I'm gonna record this and then send it to everybody anyway. So do you have any general questions so far in any of the positions? I was just looking at the current spreads and CSP recommendations. You're referring to the uh, the, the features, the, the one that you just... Okay. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll about to go over that. Let me just look at the last few credit spreads here. Um, uh, I'll send a recording of the video, but real quick on the CSP side, everything's in the green and quite a few of the three teams already closed. For the spread side, we got... Unless you've got a boy. JK, okay, that's a little bit near yeah, challenge. You is a little bit challenged. Yeah, yeah. That's a good buffer. Your boy is like, I can't run that test until the last round. You only have to speak the mic. Go there, speak the You'll be in my You can't start shit up you, bro. You can't shit on Okay. So all these other ones for 318 look good. And all right, features. 
Um, if you look at the tab for the spreadsheet, it's a little bit all over the place for futures, but I was testing out quite a few of these all the way up to January, and I wanted to make sure that I understood it pretty well before mentioning it to wow. the main group here. But um, CSP here is a cash secured put, just like we do for normal trades. One 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 trade, I'll go over later. A strangle is essentially a cash secured put and a sold call wow. together. And then I have tried a few uh, yeah, credit spreads and iron condors. Do you have a Do you have a question, Dale? Oh, no, I know. I haven't tried fut futures before, so there's something really okay. new. I just hear another person in the background. It's hard to hear you. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about it. That's why. Uh, That's okay. People love. Yeah, uh, have you done the futures before? No, I have not uh, something really yeah, new. Safety. I'm not sure if yeah, I can no, even no, trade I, on it. Just okay. Plus. So what I've been looking at for the futures is the following. I'll type these out in a Word doc so you can see it better. So here are the possible. I'm not, I'm not even wrong. Um, I'm not even wrong. That you could do. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Keep robots check your comments out. MNQ is for the NASDAQ 100. It's just like the QQQ, but it is for the futures market. We also have MES. MES is just like the S&P 500, so like SPY. Those are the two I've mainly been using. The M's make it lower uh, buying power. If you have a lot of buying power, you could just do NQ instead of MNQ and ES instead of MES. So a futures product essentially is a highly levered, leveraged um, position on these individual stocks. They're able to be traded 24 hours a day pretty much. I think there's only about a 30, 45 minute break right after close, but then it opens back up again um, and six days a week. So Saturday is the only day you can't trade these, but there's a lot of flexibility in when you can make these trades if you want to, if you're busy during the day. So let's look at the um, MES first. MES again is just like the SPY. So if we open up SPY in the um, account here, um, SPY now is at 433 and change, right? If I type in backslash MES, you're going to see it's pretty much the same price within a dollar or two, but they moved the decimal point over one place, right? So instead of the 432, it's 4,326, okay? Yep. Now, um, you could buy and sell these individual features if you want, just like buying SPY. And it, as you see, if I do buy single, it's not gonna cost 4,330. It's gonna cost $757 because they're using what's called span margin. It's a bit complicated. Essentially, it's a lot of leverage for these positions. So. For $757, you could essentially be trading pretty similar to SPY. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think two contracts of MES is equal to one spot. Oh, yeah, we'll have to double check that. So if you thought I mean, if you thought SPY was going to go up in the near term, you could easily buy this contract, sell it a few hours later, and then make a quick profit. But the negatives are true as well. You could, if it goes down, you can lose a lot of money. <laughs> What I'm focusing mostly on is no, 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 credit spreads or yeah, selling puts really, really far out of the money, very similar to selling stock, right? So now let's just look at SPY and let's say we wanted to sell a five million put at the end of April. So it's about 44 days from now. Pretty conservative safe trade would be selling the 345 strike, very big cushion from the 432. And it'll pay you about $118 for that, which is decent. But problem is your buying power is 34,000, which is a large amount of buying power, which many traders can't really use. And even if you did have this much, you may not necessarily want to do that trade. You're going to get about 0.3 or so percent. So let's just remember that um, 345 for end of April. If we go to the backslash MES, 
and look at that same 345. You'll just add a zero to it. So it'll be 3450. 3450 here, same 0.05 delta as the SPY. This is mimicking SPY. And you could get 1150. However, this is a five times multiplier. So you're actually getting 1150 times five. This will be 5750. There is a little bit higher commissions, 225 for it, but you get a credit of $55. So you're getting almost half the premium of SPY, but the buying power is minuscule. Um, I'm not sure that buying power makes sense because I already have a contract on for it. It should be about four or $500 or so, not $19, but that'd be amazing. Yeah, I just check and I, I apparently I can trade that as well. So okay. it doesn't need doesn't seem to need um permission from from uh, thing or swing. So that's pretty interesting. Did so you, I can uh, did you apply for futures at some uh, point? Because I had to apply for futures. No, I don't. I'm because I never traded before, so I something that's really new to me. Yeah, you would have to actually get approval for it. So when you go on TD Ameritrade, you can just do it online. It's a TD Ameritrade. There's going to be apply for futures, just like applying for options. So you, you had to have done that before. So you do the same idea. And they approved, you in, they approved me about three days later. Um, so for looking at these contracts, the odds of it going from 43.25 to 34.50 is 5%. That's what they're saying based on implied, implied volatility and the VIX and all that stuff. So what's interesting about this is you would get a pretty decent return on it for a fairly low buying power. Again, the buying power was off, it should be about five, $600 or so. But you would have to buy a contract of MES, okay? So I'm gonna buy one contract of MES. It's gonna be more here because the stock price is $700. It'll end up being pretty close to that. I'm not sure, some of these numbers because I already had a position open on it, but this typically should be about $1,400, $1,300 to actually own one MES position, okay? So I wouldn't mind being assigned at 3450 because that means that SPY would have dropped a very significant amount in just 43 days, right? So 4325 minus 3450, it would have to go down 875. Divide that by 4325, the current price. And you're looking at a 20% drop in the SPY in a month and a half. Not to say that can't happen, but it's very, very rare that you're gonna get a drop that big what's also good about it is you would be then buying possibly in a pretty low point because S&P dropped 20%. There's a good chance it might bounce back afterwards, okay? So for doing these, just selling the put, um, I won't mind actually getting a sign on it and mailing it. You could also sell covered calls on it if you wanted to, and you could sell the covered call. Let's say you were assigned at 3450, you could sell the covered call at 37, 3800 and make a pretty good return on the other end, okay? So question, um... Nice. Um, so uh, assuming that I'm assigned on it, I, I'm assigned this, um, you know, future. So uh -huh. does it ever expire or what, what instrument is it actually? So there, there are different expiration dates based on when we're assigned. I've never actually got to that point where- But assuming I'm assigned on, that, on the expiration. expiration, my question is when I'm assigned on the expiration and I have to buy the, the future, Yeah. right? So what what instrument is what what is this? This is a it's not stock, right? It's um no, it's a futures contract, which is pretty much aligning to what SPY is trading at. So that if it's a contract, that means you get a further expiration date on on that contract. Yeah, they have is different that... they have different expiration dates, as you can see here. I think it's four times a year it actually expires. I've never got to the point where I was assigned and tried to um wait until ex expiration on it. So I can't give a clear answer to what happens on that yet. I'm gonna, okay. look, into it. I'm gonna look into it more. I don't wanna say anything that might be incorrect. Okay, honestly. Essentially what I've been doing is I've been selling contracts that are in between these dates. So the next one that expires is in two days. That's the quad witching day where, you know, the SPX, the options, the third Friday of the month and futures also expire. Um, on March, but after that, it's 93 days out. So I'm looking to trade possibly in between that 44 days out. We're essentially selling an option before this expiration. And I wouldn't necessarily want to pick a um, contract to sell an option on, on the expiration date. 
Again, I'm not 100% sure how that works. So I don't want to give a clear wrong answer on that. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out, you know, what, what, exact, what that actually it means when it expires. Do you... Maybe I could paper... Use... I might try to paper trade barring it, the one that's right now, and then see what happens on Monday when it's past yeah, yeah, expiration yeah. date. I'm curious what will happen. I'll just paper trade that. Yeah, maybe you... you there's a price on it, on the contract. I don't know. I mean... Does it make sense if it just uh, it becomes it's zero? It's right? a good question. I'll look more into it. But um, for these contracts, I'm most likely going to try to get a pretty decent target percent profit on it and not necessarily let them expire anyway, because it doesn't seem very capital efficient to let them expire worthless. So for this one, yep. let's say I did this trade, the 34.50, and then I'm making about $50 or so in premium, right? I would probably buy to close it around 15 to $20. So get a little more than 50%, probably around 60, 70%, and then just get out of the contract because there's a good chance that it's not gonna get anywhere close to these numbers. And um, as you see, when I'm doing these, I'm going very, very low deltas on purpose just to see how the numbers work out. And based on the VIX being so high, it's a 27, it's been in the 30s for a while. These premiums are really, really high to go far out of the money with a low delta. But I'm curious what's going to happen when the VIX goes down to say 15, 20. Obviously it's not going to pay as much and you'll have to be closer to in the money, but we'll see when that happens, right? All right. All right. So that's the futures. Um, I would consider doing something like that. You could also make it a put credit spread. So let's go back to that 34.50. We're going to sell that. And then let's try to buy, I usually go about 100 points off. So 33.50. And that's still giving a $46 credit, which is very close to what the um, initial one was, about a 50, what was it, $55 credit. You do have to pay double commissions and commissions add up because it's 225 per futures contract. So that's why I'm doing these pretty far out in expiration because I don't want commissions to eat this up a lot. But you could actually trade these for ES contracts pretty much any day you want, just like SPY and SPX. Interesting that it doesn't have any max loss. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing it. It's doing weird stuff there. There obviously is a max loss. Let me do an ES contract and see what happens. ES is the much bigger version of MES. So we'll go very similar expiration. I did sell a similar one 44 days. Let's go the week before just so you can see the number is different. 0.05 Delta is gonna be very close to the same price. Let's do about 3,500, it's 0.04 Delta. And if you just sold that, the buying power is gonna be more That's contract, so 700 in buying power. So if you have the funds for it, you can consider ES. Um, I would do MES just to play around with it first wow. and not go very high under funds on it. So, so, you so this kind of max loss is based on... Yeah, the max loss is know. if the SPY went to zero. Zero, yeah. That means there's no more market or economy, pretty much. So don't be too freaked out about that max loss. I'm just wondering, if it's, is, the, is it because of <laughs> assuming the contract, this futures contract uh, sort yeah, of It's like expires. you're buying, it's, a, it's essentially like you're buying this at 3,500 and then went all the way down to zero. ES has a 50 times multiplier. So essentially do 3,500 times 50. I think that's how I got that number. It's going to be pretty close to it. Yeah, I see about 175,000. Right. That's assuming it goes to zero, which won't happen. Yes, now, so yes, that, that is a lot. And if it goes way below this, you could be a lot of money. I recommend making it a put credit spread. So let's sell the 3,500 and then buy the 3,400 or so. And you could try different with 50 to 100 yep. reasonable credit 175 but times up by 50 you're going to get about 80 bucks off it the buying power is more than that it's going to be at least seven eight hundred dollars i think and then the max loss would be the width of the spreads so yep it sounds so better and uh, <laughs> more manageable <laughs> or can you repeat that yeah, the max loss seems uh, more manageable. Uh, looking at yeah. this, especially on trying it for the first time. I would, I wouldn't be doing even ES on this um, without again testing it out on MES first. 
it's not going to need to use $4,900 to make this contract. The buying power effect is doing really wacky stuff. I'm guessing seven, $800, but um, you're not going to need this whole amount in your funds. However, that is the max loss if it got down to the 3,400 strike. So just be aware of that. The odds of that happening are 3%, which is extremely low. Yep. I mean, it would have to go down about 22% or so in 37 days. Yep, sounds interesting. So that's the trade I essentially Thanks, did last night. I just went the week after. I sold the 3,400 put and then bought the 3,300 put. Did the same thing on the call side. Um, this is called a strangle, where you do the puts and the calls. and What's interesting is you could actually sell just the naked call on a futures, even though there is an infinite loss theoretically on that, because what if SPY goes to 5 million, then you would actually owe it. But I made it into a credit spread to have a defined risk on it. So again, sold the 47.50, bought the 48.50. I did this when the market was around 42.70, I think it was. And now we're at 43.21. So you could see on the call side, I'm already down about $50 because the price went up and it's closer to the 47.50. However, the put side, I'm up about $40 because it's further away from the put side. Does that make sense? Yep. And so yep. it's plenty of time, 45 days. If we look at that contract though, the 47.50, I'm just curious what the delta changed. These are both 0.05 deltas last night. It's going to be almost the same deltas, I'm pretty sure. So if you look at the open position, the put side went down to 0.04 delta because the market's up a bit. The call side is probably very close to 0.05 still, wow. even with this update. Uh, 0.06 now. So I would just let these go until you get your tar target profit that you want. You know, I'm looking around 60, 70%. Most likely. If the deltas get to 0.3, then I would look to roll both the sold and the bought position and keep it as a credit spread. Okay. So let's say some bad case scenarios here. It keeps shooting up to like 4,600 or so. Then my 4,750 is getting risk. Is it's going to get challenged here. The delta might be close to 0.3 if that happens, you know, really quickly. At that point, I'm going to send, instead of selling it, I'm going to buy this one. Instead of buying it, I'm going to sell that one and then go out another month or two, ideally at a higher strike price. So I'm not right. going to necessarily take the stop loss on it. You could stop loss out if you want, just like the normal credit spreads. If you want to do a 3x stop. However, I don't think in futures they let you do a stop limit order. I could try to do it and I don't think it will let me. But so here's the two positions. Let me see if they'll let me actually close it. Obviously, I don't want it yet because I'd be down a bit. See, there's no stop order. So I can be very careful in futures. Right. That's interesting. So I would set an alert at the 0.3 delta, which would be around 4,600 or so. So let me see how to do that. It's a little different on futures, but I click set alert. Add or, yeah, I don't want the bid. I might as well again, so it last. Oh, it's doing the actual contract. Okay. So I'm going to create an alert on the actual option here. 4,600 seems reasonable. It's still a big jump if it goes at or above that. I'm going to get alerted. And then there's a good chance that I'm going to have to manage that position. Wait, at or above 43, 24. Okay. And then I'll do another alert at the put side as well. So I made my put strike at 3,400. I'd probably go a little higher, 36 or so hundred. So an alert there. And then um, it'll be at or below 3,600. And then I'll manage it if I need to. That's the simple way to do it. Just let them go. And then um, buy to close at your target percent. You could do a little bit more advanced stuff if you're interested in it. 
like moving the strikes. So let's say it's going up quite a bit, maybe another five, six percent. The put side will be worth a lot less because the odds of it getting down that much will be very low. You could decide to close that early and then sell another put spread higher up and possibly get more return that way. But then that is a little bit riskier because then you're possibly going to be challenged on the downside too. So be careful on that, but it's possible if you want to. All right. Any, any other general questions or thoughts on it? Again, I'm still pretty new to this, so hopefully trying to learn on it. Yeah, I, I think it's worth um, finding out more. <laughs> yeah. Especially, you know, I, I look at the chart, it seems to be pretty stable. It's not, uh, it doesn't have very, very, um, you know, extreme downward. Yeah, you it mean for pretty... just SPY? The yes, yeah, the the uh, the futures. Yes. Yeah. So when I was looking at those strikes, the it's at least what 18, 20 percent out of the money on the put side. So we have been seeing some one, two percent drops per day, and then sometimes seeing occasional up one percent like today. Um, but if you're twenty percent off, like that's a very rare black swan type event that would happen to make that occur. Yep. I just like the capital efficiency. It's so much less buying power now yeah. instead of uh, selling a naked one. Pretty interesting that um, you know the uh, capital is, is, is requirement is not high. I wonder yeah. what is the logic behind it. You know, who knows? Uh, it's still very volatile. VIX was still at twenty seven or so. When the VIX is down to the teens, you know, nineteen, then it's be relatively stable. I've, I've been talking to other futures people that yeah, trade yeah. this stuff, and they typically go around 0.1 to 0.15 delta. And the returns are obviously a lot higher there, but it's definitely riskier. And especially in these volatile times, I wouldn't want to necessarily yep. take that much. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen in Ukraine. <laughs> exactly. And we don't the know how much is... further it's going to go compared to just Ukraine. So. Yep. How are you in all your other positions? Anything you want me to go over? I do have one question um, about, you know, um, because I've been selling puts for quite some time, but because of the volatility of the markets, so some of these puts have been uh, have, have gone down quite a bit. I mean, the, the prices have gone down below the strike price of these puts, but these puts are far out. So, so for example, in June or in, in December, no, so one one of the one of the thoughts I was thinking about is you know if I it, it looks like I'm going to have the position anyway to be assigned the shares. So between now and then, is it worth um a selling a call on it using the, the dates of the that that expiry of the, the contract that, that is of the sell put? So okay. that on that day, you know, yeah. it, does that make sense? It makes sense. It's a pretty advanced strategy um, and you could make some additional return. However, you could also get into some danger if the market shoots back up and then you're not close to those strike prices anymore. Yeah, um, some of these shares like uh, Moderna is free, has gone down pretty low. Yeah. So unlikely that you hit even close to those um, some of those prices that I've sell put on. So 164 now, what was your strike price for your put? Sold about 220, mm. 220 for put. So, so rather than wait for it to to June, yeah, to approach June, I, I was thinking, uh, it doesn't make sense to sell a call then uh, at around 220 or 20. even you know even 200. You know, is, yeah. if it ever goes up to 200, I'm really quite happy. <laughs> yeah, are you looking at the same expiration like June as well? Yes, uh, I was thinking of the same date, or should I choose a date that is um, maybe a few a week out, or you know, or sh maybe, should I choose but before? Then, but then you could be assigned on it, especially if it shoots up now. It went up ten percent this morning, and it's up fifteen. Yeah, but points, so you got to be careful with this stuff. If you go the, if you go to the two twenty at June, it's going to pay you about eight hundred dollars. Yep. So. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. The delta is 0.26, which sounds crazy because it's only at 163. 
So the market's pretty much saying that it's a very volatile stock and it could easily go up or down dramatically. Making that extra yeah. 750, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. And then you would be pretty happy if it got back to the 220 anyway. But I wouldn't, be selling, I wouldn't be trying to take too much risk to sell calls at like 200 or 180, stuff like that. Because right. then if it goes against you, suddenly you have another issue to worry about. Yeah. Well, one question though, Let, assuming that uh, I choose the same date at the expiry date on my sell put. So on the day that I'm assigned the share, assuming that it is, is below the, my strike price on my uh, sell put, which is 220. So I should get a sign. And then on that day when I sell a call of 220, let's say, okay, so I will be assigned the shares, but the sell call will go uh, expire worthless, right? Exactly. That, that makes sense, right? Yes. So if you, if, you sell assume, the, if you sell the put and call at the exact same strike price and it's under it, you'll be fine because you're right. Yeah. The call will expire worthless. And then you'll be assigned okay. the put. And then at that point, you could sell cover calls on the on the yep. Yep. shares afterwards. Yep, that makes sense. It gets confusing if you sold a call at say two hundred though, because then what if it goes between two hundred and two twenty? <laughs> yeah. It's like, ugh. and then it's hard to know your target, your profit and loss. But I I realized thing or swim. There was one time that I I um did a sell call on Moderna. And the price, the strike price went way up. I think it was uh, I bought it at about three hundred plus, and then it went up to four hundred. So I was uh, I I got minus one hundred on my thing of swim or on Moderna. Yeah. So I must buy back, and the yeah. stock price was uh, about four hundred. Yeah. But I, I didn't buy back, and then after about two weeks, because I, I wasn't really aware of it, so I so I didn't buy back. Then the stock price dropped around to 230. Mm -hmm. So that was when I buy back and I, I make money. You know? yeah, good. That, was, that was good. Good luck too. You could have yeah. had the worst case scenario where you get early assigned because the stock was much higher than what your call was. And then that would take up a lot of mining power and probably get margin called and all that bad stuff. So luckily that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lucky break for me. Be Otherwise, if I bought... Call, just be very careful selling calls if you don't own the shares already. Because that's theoretical, not infinite loss. Yeah, understand. Yeah, I don't. I don't personally do that. I'll sell covered calls all the time if I own the shares. But if I don't own the shares yet, even if I might be a sign on a put that I sold, I don't want to. I just want to wait it out and then sell covered calls afterwards. It gets really it's wacky stuff if you try to. He's out a few hundred dollars trying to sell calls. But yeah, again, if you sell the two twenty call in June, I think that's fine. Yep. Thanks for that, Lance. Yeah, no problem. Any other all questions right. you have? Uh, no, that's, that's all I have. Thank right. you so much. No problem. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on the Discord. Okay, okay sure. Bye. All right, bye.